While many people worry about lead exposure in their homes or in the environment, for some, the workplace may offer the greatest risk. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health reports that work-related lead exposure is a continuing problem in the United States. Many people don't know that exposure to high levels of lead can lead to high blood pressure, kidney and nerve damage, and low weight babies. Anyone can be exposed by breathing in lead fumes or ingesting lead dust. Both do not have an odor, so you may not know you are at risk. People who work with lead may also take home lead dust and possibly expose family members. We have uh, quite a number of children who are exposed from take-home um, exposures from parental occupations, battery plants, other automotives. We have actually some through the oil fields, and it's not because lead is in the oil, clearly, but it's actually from the lubricant they use on the pipes and the joists. These jobs and industries have been known to put workers at risk of lead exposure. Lead mining, smelting, processing and recycling, precious metals refining, auto and radiator repair, battery manufacturing and recycling, welding, construction, remodeling or renovating, bridge and highway painting, indoor target practice or bullet making, both can generate lead dust and art restoration in certain cases. Some industries are effectively and responsibly managing lead in the workplace, and one example is Johnson Controls Incorporated. The company produces 13 million batteries per year, processes over a million pounds of lead daily, and consumes about 150 million pounds of lead oxide per year. Managers and workers here make safety a top priority. We've implemented practices at our facilities, including air showers, to knock some of the lead off of our employees after leaving the production floor. We provide uniforms to ensure that our employees do not take lead home with them. We provide showers. We provide several hand washing stations, including instructions to them and training on proper hand washing techniques. The company also provides extensive training and personal protective equipment for all employees. To help protect workers, respirators are used when needed to filter out lead particles from the air. The first two days is spent in classroom training, uh, specifically related to safety and lead training, lead hazards. We require several pieces of PPE for our employees that the company does provide, which includes uh, various gloves as well as respirators when required. Lead exposure by ingestion typically occurs when lead is introduced to the mouth through contaminated hands, food, or other items such as cigarettes. Hands, clothing, and hair can easily become contaminated with just a small amount of lead dust. Before eating, drinking, and smoking, hands, forearms, and faces should always be washed. Removal of lead from skin, clothing, and hair cannot be accomplished effectively with regular soap or detergent. Instead, a product specifically designed for lead removal should be used. Gloves should always be worn when working with or around lead. Additionally, disposable overalls should be worn over clothing, or else the clothing should remain at the work location and laundered on site. This helps prevent lead from being taken home and potentially contaminating automobiles, homes, and exposing families. Workers at Johnson Controls also have their blood tested for lead exposure on a regular basis. One of the other big initiatives that we do here that helps promote uh, low blood leads and decreased exposure is that we spend a lot of time coaching and training our employees on proper techniques. If people do start to show um, indications of levels increasing, uh, we, we do coaching with them and we investigate to figure out what could be causing that exposure, uh, whether it be air or personal hygiene, um, that we can work with that employee to improve it. Most states require blood lead levels to be reported to their state health department. In Missouri, if a worker's blood lead level is elevated, the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services contacts doctors, employers, and workers to investigate the source of exposure. 
This information is also collected and sent to NIOSH for the National Adult Blood-Led Epidemiology and Surveillance Program, known as ABLES. From 2010 to 2016, the program has helped decrease the rate of adults with elevated blood levels by 40%. Researchers say the progress is exciting, but there is still a lot of room for improvement. The results show that many U.S. workers are still exposed to lead at levels that can cause health effects. Continuing to reduce workplace lead exposure is important to keep America's workers and their families healthy. NIOSH also offers a health hazard evaluation program, a free service that evaluates workplaces across the country. Any employer, employee, or union representative can request an evaluation for their workplace and employees can keep their requests confidential. Additionally, we can work with non-English speaking workforces as well. So we're really equipped to look at any potential health risk in any workplace in the United States. If you are concerned about lead exposure at work, you should participate in your company's blood lead testing program if available. Talk to your employer, your doctor, or your local health department about family members being tested too, especially for pregnant women and children under the age of six. To learn more about lead poisoning prevention or NIOSH's ABLES and HHE programs, you can follow the links below in the description of this video.